was talking to um, a coach friend of mine last night and we are very similar in our ways. It's scary how similar we are. And we were talking about um, how it is that we wound up being the way we are, like psychologically, like how is it that, you know, how is it that I get on better with um, a small circle of friends? How is it that I get on better with older people? And she said to me, she was like, you're an only child, right? And when we were talking and I was like, yeah, I am an only child. And she pointed out to me the fact that as an only child, I mean, the majority of my interaction was with older people. So my parents, right? Um, my parents, I didn't even have lots of cousins around me. So it wasn't like I didn't have siblings, but I had other family members of my age. I literally, unless it was friends, it was just me. And it's really interesting when she said that, I was like, yes, there is a, I think there is a huge part of that. And also the fact that we were talking about Grayson, because Grayson is going to be an only child. And whilst maybe he doesn't understand that, I thought, my husband and I talk to Grayson like he is an adult. We treat him like he's an adult. And I'm not saying that parents who have more than one kid don't do that too. I'm just observing the difference. And it's really interesting to me how we end up doing these things or being this way and things like that. And what I noticed was that I'm walking. You can hear all sorts of cars and shit. What I noticed is that the way I have developed over the years, and I'm talking about like since I was a kid or a teen, is interesting to me because when I was younger, I missed out on a lot of kind of the gossipy shit. The stuff that my friends got from their older siblings, right? I missed out on all that stuff. So when I was a kid and a teenager, I felt like I was missing out. I felt like I wasn't cool because I didn't know this stuff. Yet, as I've got older, I'm like, I learned, obviously. And it's okay. It doesn't make any difference, right? It makes zero difference whether I knew this stuff when I was like a teenager. I learned anyway. And I guess that's the one thing that I've realized is that we deal with a lot of crap as teenagers it's a very difficult time and it, it definitely plays into not being accepting of ourselves we don't accept who we are we think that we're not cool or we listen to other people we listen to too much of other people's judgments and bias just finished a quick workout in the garden you can see my garden Totally my garden. Trampoline, slides and all. I'm very lucky to have this amount of space, I know that. Um, it's very serene, despite the birds. The birds make a lot of noise. The idea that we should do certain things because other people are doing it, it's kind of, I don't know, it just, it really bothers me because what I see is that there is still a huge amount of that going on in the health space. Um, the whole one size fits all, the whole there is only one plan and if you can't adhere to that then you are the problem. Guys, there is an element of the fact, you know, maybe if you're not putting in the work, because let's be honest, I've said this before, I certainly used to cheat on all my diets. I used to struggle to adhere to the rules but whilst yes I lacked some focus I think I probably also lacked some motivation um yes I wasn't consistent but the diet would have failed even if I had been focused motivated and consistent because that's what diets do they keep us struggling they keep us searching for more they keep us looking outside of ourselves for the answer they keep us thinking that we have to that we're not enough that's what they do and people will see this clip and say yeah but they make tons of money yeah why because we keep buying into it right if we the consumer 
did not continually buy in to the meal replacements, the products, the diet, the weekly weigh-ins, then they wouldn't exist. Like, that's the truth of it. And would we all be slim? Sure, no, we wouldn't. We would still struggle. But there are other ways to achieve the body you want. It doesn't involve strict calorie restriction. It doesn't involve giving up everything you enjoy. It doesn't mean that you have to spend the next six months all in because otherwise you'll struggle, right? It doesn't mean that. It means that you live, right? You live and you you focus on your goals, but you eat for your goals and you eat for your body and you eat for you eat for what your body needs instead of eating because somebody else has told you when and what to eat. I don't want to call it self-love. I feel like I feel like that's a really difficult topic to try and navigate. It's like, what do you mean by self-love? What do you mean by I should love myself even when I'm overweight? I, I you know, and I get to that and I and I will cover that topic and I think it's very important because I talk about health, I talk about changing your health, about balance, about creating structure, about embedding healthy habits, about taking action, about implementing stuff. And I talk about that because I truly believe that that is how you lose weight long term, right? It's how you lose weight and you keep it off. Because it's not just about the physical transformation, it is about your mindset. And yes, there is that word again, that not so sexy word. It is about how you think about things, right? It's how you think, how you feel, and then how you act. It's not just like, oh, I can restrict myself to 1200 calories for six months to a year and poof, I'm skinny and then everything is right with the world, right? I tried that, right, for a very long time. So whilst I say that I didn't like the diet rules, something changed, you know, something did change and I took action and I was successful. I've lost 60 pounds and kept it off, right? I've kept it off for five years. <laughs> I was gonna say four, but five years. What is it that stops us? What is it that prevents us from seeing that what we look like and the aesthetics and wanting to fit in to a particular type of jean or wear shorts or a skirt or a dress or a bikini what is it about that that we stop doing at some point why is it that at some point we're like mm, I just don't care about that anymore and I don't I don't even think it's anything to do with motherhood I really really don't I genuinely don't think it has anything to do with that because again I've seen plenty of women who are much older than me who have older children than me that still care about this shit they still care about this stuff and I just I guess I'm wondering what changed for you? Like, what what changed? If you are reading my emails, if you are following my page, if you if you see my stuff and you're giving it likes and comments and shares, then something I'm saying resonates with you. And I guess I want to know what it is. What resonates with you? What is it about what I say that makes sense? Why is it that, you know what, you're like, yeah, I am over the dieting. I am over this. But also what prevents you from really going all in? Like, what prevents you from going all in into a fat loss strategy instead of continuing with dieting.